Hello again. Welcome to a series of live interviews with some of the theatre by QE2 entertainers and comedians. Thank you to Theatre by QE2, Book My Show and H2 Productions. And thanks, Nigel, for hitting the right buttons as ever. Before I introduce tonight's guest, let's just quickly talk about last night's competition and announce the winners. Now, comedian and Dubai resident Sonia Jane Salmon was here talking comedy uh, with some not too blue stories, I should say. We asked you for the name of the famous comedy partner of Bobby Bull. And we've picked from the thousands of people who said Tommy Cannon, Claire Walker from Theatre by QE2's Facebook page. And from Book My Show, we're going to give two tickets to Volney Mariano Fernandez. Congratulations. We'll be in touch with your tickets very soon. Now, every night we're giving away free tickets to future productions at Theatre by QE2 or uh, those productions, the comedy productions with Big Fish at Theatre by QE2. I'll have another competition question in a few minutes. Right. If you like your rock and roll, entertaining, larger than life, and completely over the top, this is a treat. Tonight, Ian Beatty of the Freddie and Queen experience is online. Let's just get a flavour of Ian on stage. This is what you want. This is what you're going to get. Are you ready? You know it's going to be a good gig when there are lightsabers in the crowd. Ian Beatty online with us today. He is Freddie. Ian, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Uh, good evening. Good to have you on. Look, uh, I have to start with this. Freddie Mercury is one of Rock's ultimate characters. I think that's undeniable. Larger than life in, in so many different ways. The voice, the expression, the exuberance. What's it like being somebody else for a living, but being Freddie for a living, Ian? <laughs> it's fantastic. It really is. Um, I never thought in a million years that I would, would have took this career path. Uh, if you'd have told right. me this when I was as I was growing up, I would never have dreamed in a million years I would have been a Freddie Mercury because when I was younger, I was I was always a Queen fan. I was brought up on Queen with uh, with my parents, particularly my dad. And I actually played guitar and bass when I was younger. And if anything, I wanted to be Brian May <laughs> uh, when I was younger. But um, life had other ideas, and the the thing I just it just kind of evolved, and I just um, it, it it's just crazy really since, since the start of the journey how it's just so um, sorry how did it all come about i mean because you know it's one thing to be a, a guitar player and a bass player to want to be brian may i had very similar intentions in my life i mean i think lots of us did um but how did the whole queen experience things or crystallize well it it sort of goes back to around approximately around eight or nine years ago, I think it was. And out with, um, there was a, another a Freddie tribute that was looking to team up uh, and, and start a band. And we just kind of, and I just kind of auditioned to become the bass player for that. And uh, we just kind of, so we, we started that journey. Um, and it, it never really got much out of the rehearsal room because it, it wasn't really working out because for whatever reason, the, 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 the Freddie wasn't turning up to rehearsals and, and whatnot and this and the other so it, on most rehearsals i was doing all the all the singing uh, and and whatnot with the band and um because it wasn't working out with him uh you know the guys were why don't, why don't you, you do it you know and i and 
and obviously I was on the base at the time. I, what are you talking about? Yeah, you know, we think we could do it. You know, go out front, and uh, and I, I didn't. I just dismissed it. Uh, you know, I thought, no, I'm, I, I can't see that happening. Um, and then um, a couple of other people had said it to me as well, and a well respected. Um, uh, well respected uh, John Lennon tribute had mentioned it to her because I was talking about my band with him we were having a conversation he said are you the Freddie in the band I said no he said oh he said you'd make a great Freddie and I went oh hold on a minute and he just kind of urged me to think oh, maybe I should look at this you know and then um, yeah then I sort of just set up on the challenge really which I'd, at the time well I knew it was going to be a mammoth task but it, it, there's so much to think about when doing Freddie um, particularly it was the mannerisms that for me was the biggest challenge um, vocally, I was, I've was i always been blessed with a, a quite a high vocal range, so um, I felt quite, um, oh, I was, I, I thought I could, that would be fine. I just need to work on phrasing and and, and, and maybe, you know, um, that sort of thing. But it was the mannerisms that was, the, that was something that was really sort of challenging um, because I'm not a trained dancer or anything like that, but some of the moves that Freddie does, it's just, uh, it's just, it's incredible, really. Some of the things he does. He does. A, he does so many. There's so many different moves and facial expressions, and just from his not just from his legs and his his, his whole body to his neck, to his whole movements. There's so much to think about. And and when I started that journey, I, I knew it wasn't going to be right when I came out of the blocks. I knew it was going to take time, and it did. And it took me um, a couple of years, really, to really start to get to the level that I wanted to get to. And um, but from day one, I felt nothing but support. But people, um, there was something there, something, you know, something uh, pe people could see it in me. And, and they just, they, they, you know, I was getting nothing but encouragement from um, not just from family and friends, but from audiences as well. It's been well received, you know. So it just it, it just made me want to continue the journey and get better and better at it. And and I was only messing around with it at the beginning. And then I went, started doing it um, sort of semi-professionally, obviously, moving in towards that. And then in the end, um, I ended up, it, the demand come so big, I ended up now doing it full-time as a full-time living. And I have done for the past couple of years, which has just been, um, it's just been incredible. The demand was so high. Um, I, I must add, I started out at the beginning sort of doing more solo shows just to get myself going, um, you know, doing smaller sort of gigs and then um and then it naturally evolved where I started doing bigger and bigger stuff and with the band then and uh yeah that's and that's and and today i just i just i just can't believe what i'm doing for a living <laughs> it's the dream dream job well i mean i'm going to talk to you about some of the shows that we do because you you guys are really really busy and you know some of some of your schedule last year was just unreal i mean i suppose it helps because freddie is such a I mean, he's revered, isn't he? He's so well liked as a character. That kind of helps. There is a bit of a likeness there. You can obviously grow a moustache. Those are all key things. But they're big, big shoes to fill. Not just the voice, but as you were saying there, the mannerisms, the way he was, because he's almost inimitable. He was, he was really himself. I always think. Yeah, yeah. He was. Um... He was a larger than life character and one of the things I learned very early on when doing this and, and this is stuck with me to this day and uh, it's a bit of a key to it really and that is you literally have to drop all inhibitions you have to not curl it when you get on that stage you just have to let anything go just 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 go for it you can't hold back if you know you, you just got to be larger than life and can't hold back and just um, uh, and that was one of the big key points in the journey when I first started out, because the more the more bigger you are, the more um, um, not crazy, <laughs> but the more you get amongst them, if you know what I mean, like to involve in the crowd and and being bigger and larger than life. The more you are, the more the, the more the audience love it, and the more it, it works. Um, and and that has been um, probably the biggest catalyst for me when I started this. Not just the mannerisms, but that you have to be comfortable doing it. You, you know, you have to just. And I think. I'm quite an, <laughs> an an extrovert character anyway, particularly on stage. So it kind of married well with with myself a little bit. So we do have that in kind of in common, really. I'm I'm quite an uh, an extrovert. I do like <laughs> so sort of be be in the centre of attention if you like, and and that kind of marries well with we doing Freddie. <laughs> uh, when you're at parties, what do you tell people you do for a living? 
<laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody seems to know. I, I, uh, I get it, particularly um, locally. You know, oh my, my. Um, I've got two sons, and and the whole school know what I do, and you know the teachers have pulled me up and talked to me about it, and um, uh, yeah, most people know what I do. It's it's crazy, really. Um, for those, uh, well, yeah, it's, for those that don't, um, it, obviously it's it's uh, it's uh, a little bit surprise and a very interesting because it's such a different. Um, avenue and different sort of job and career to most people so people are very interested to sit you know if the people i don't know or don't know me and i bring it up it's like wow you know they, they really want to <laughs> get to know you know more about it really so it's uh but I, I i am truly blessed and very very lucky to to have found this 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 career that just just works it just um it, i'm very very blessed in that I'm, and i know that it's, I mean, it's one of those jobs, isn't it? People must think if you're very lucky if you can do what you love to do. Um, yeah. Just, I want to see some more of you on video in a second, but just one more question. You were talking about Freddie's mannerisms there, and it's something that we don't think because Queen with Freddie in particular, we always sort of saw as a really bombastic sort of spectacle uh, on stage, and you forget that it comes from, it mainly comes from him and his you know, the way he moves, the way he jumps around, the, the length of the microphone stand and all that stuff. But what was really tough? What, what did you have trouble nailing with Freddie that maybe, you know, the casual observer like me, for example, wouldn't really think about? What, what was the most difficult to catch? Well, he, the the boom stand, he does a lot with that boom stand. You know, there's, there's all sorts of um, little tricks and, and moves that he does. Uh, and, and it's that's... And he does so much with his legs. There's a lot of shuffles, a lot of turns, and a lot of. Um, and but one thing I found that was very important early on as well was energy. Um, right. uh, it, it's a lot of it's about the energy, jumping around, running around, and and a lot of it's about. And it's not just the the cute um, moves, as I said, the turns, and 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 I could I couldn't put into words the, the, the amount of different things that I put in a shot. In fact, sometimes I'll do a show and find a new one. Like, oh. Freddie did that, and I didn't. I'd not even realised because I've watched since so many videos. Sometimes I, I'll find new things when I'm on stage that I've just done something. Like, oh, that worked, and it, and it goes. It stays in the show, you know. And I don't choreograph myself in terms of every show is different, and I respond to the audience, you know, uh, in that way. Whereas uh, all the um, pretty much all of those moves will be in the show, but not necessarily at the same time or at the same moment. It, it's not choreographed, but it, what is what is so important. Uh, with it was the energy it's it's all about you know as soon as we come out there and it's not just me as well it's it's it, it, my brian may is um also big on energy as well he, he doesn't just stand there and play guitar he replicates brian may's um stances and moves and he runs around with me so you got him going one way me going another and it's like that so it's lots of energy and for people just it's very contagious when they see that hard work and energy on that stage they do respond to it and it, it and, and as soon as we come out of the box it's like that and uh, pretty much we like to keep the show very up tempo very upbeat and it's 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 like a party really we just we you know it's to celebrate queen and, and have a good time and you know one thing uh, uh freddie said uh, on his death and he said you know he said to um i think it was jim beach the manager he said you know do anything with my legacy uh, but just don't make me boring. And that's one thing he never was. And um, you want, you, you'll really find me standing still on the stage, not moving. I'm practically moving for the whole show. So I'm <laughs> sweating wet through <laughs> by the end of it and worn out. It's 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 very demanding physically. But it, the adrenaline and the excitement, it, 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 that doesn't go away. And that carries you through. And, that, um, and the response, when you feel that energy, then in the room, the, the, the whole... Um, you know, um, the whole theatre or the whole festival, and that the people um, react to that. It just, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's magical, really. It really is. We're going to give tickets away to come and see you, Freddie, and the Queen Experience on board the QE2 later in 2020. Now, uh, all you have to do, if you're watching this now, follow this Facebook page to win and comment in the feed you're watching. Very simple question Who played Freddie Mercury in the film? 
Bohemian Rhapsody. Hint, it's not Ian, unfortunately, although it could have been. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on social media, Theatre by QE2, book my show, and Big Fish Comedy for more chances to win uh, as well. You're talking about the shows there and the energy, um, Ian. Talk me through some of the moments you've experienced when you thought to yourself, this is the absolute business because i can see in your eyes and in your face that you just love doing this and, I, and i'm not at all surprised but let me just cue you with ve day for example yeah well um there's been uh, obviously with the current events with covid19 and 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 everything obviously there's been um it, it, it it's hit the world for six really and um and there's been a, a, a unfortunately a lot of um and understandably a lot of negativity and morale has has has, has been um dropped very low uh, you could see that it's, it's picking up a little bit now but certainly um uh, over the over the weeks certainly in the early weeks and and when once it started getting up to like eight nine weeks, it was really starting to affect people. I think, um, and you get you get a gauge of that uh, from mainly from social media and stuff like that. But um, and and uh, so anyway, when VE VE Day came along on Sunday the eighth of of, of May, um, I I'd not planned this. But uh, I, I used to go for a walk each day, just a a, a daily walk with uh, my wife and my two boys uh, and our two boys I should say and um, and we was walking um, through our estate you know to go for our walk and I noticed that people was out celebrating VA day not 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 gathering just on their own on their own drives and just having uh, you know a, a few drinks and a few cakes some people some cups of teas other people uh, having other drinks but they were just um, there was a sense of um, an occasion a sense of an occasion you know and uh, and, and so I said to my wife, I said, I feel I should do something here. I, I really, I really do feel I should do something. Um, not everybody in my, uh, where my neighbours know what I do. Uh, certain ones we're, we're quite close to do, but um, there's just others uh, I've never really met as such or even spoken to. Um, so anyway, I took the decision to just um, set up some speakers and just and just do it in the spur of the moment. And And it was just, a magical occasion because everybody um there was no gathering they stayed on the drives but they were all stood on the end of their own um uh, properties just clapping singing dancing and it was just it was just um, i'm so glad i did it it was so rewarding because the, the morale and the spirits just lifted I, only, I think i did just about an hour set something like that but they absolutely loved it and and i had cards put through my door and gifts left at my door just thanking me so much um say thank you so much for bringing everybody together and lifting morale we really needed that and and it, and it felt um it, it felt very good it you know to do something just to help and um and and that that is very re rewarding you know if you have the the um the ability or gift to 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 be able to do that and 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 then then it's important to share, you know, and, and I'm glad I did. And I'm, and I've, and I'm, um, and it's brought us a lot closer to names as well. People who know, you know, I walk with the estate and everyone's hello, Ian, you know, and they all, because I, I said a few words as well on the day. And uh, yeah, so I'm so, it, it, it was well worth doing. I'm, I'm really proud that we did that. If there's anything that can lift spirits, it's probably a Freddie Mercury type performance, isn't it? Let's face it. I mean, the, you yeah. you guys, as Freddie and the Queen Experience, you are really busy. I was looking at some of the the stats uh, for the shows yeah. that you do. Um, look at this. 15,000 people in two weeks. This is uh, last year. 22 shows in 31 days in August 2019. That's just crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was, um, it, it's getting busier and busier. Um, I mean, next year promises to be even bigger than, well, obviously this year, a lot of shows have had to be rescheduled for next year. But uh, yeah, the, the demand has just, just, just gone through the roof. I mean, the movie has helped as well. I must, uh, you know, that, that has um, obviously generated more um, interest and more, um, uh, more more younger generations coming on board with with Queen re realizing how great they were and the anthems and everything else. But uh, yeah, last 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 year, I mean that 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 twenty two dates that included um, they were flat. We were flying out to um, 
<laughs> to Guernsey and to um, where, where else did we fly out? There, there was um, Isle of Man, and we had to get back to do a show down in London, and it was just. It was just crazy, really. It was uh, my head was spinning. Out. In fact, I think I went at one point um, two days with about an hour and a half sleep. It was just, it was literally all go, go, go from planes to, 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 to you know, touring bands. To, oh, it was just crazy month. But it was, um, but we love it. If you're going to be a slave, be a slave to rock and roll, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're living out a rock and roll dream, aren't you? In lots of ways. I mean, I I think people, yeah. a lot of people don't realise just how big big the, the sort of tribute uh, homage circuit, whatever you want to call it, is to bands, and the, the demand is it's just huge. You're a rock and roll oh, star. It is. Yeah, well, it, it it generally feels like it at times. It's it's incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, um, it, it it's it's the next best thing. I mean, you know. <laughs> and people sometimes when you come up the stage do you know i've always compared it to like being a, a, a magician we know we know when when a magician does tricks it's an illusion it's a, it, it is a, a you know it, it's a trick of the eye and and we want to believe when we're watching that show we want to believe that it's real magic we you know it, it, that's part of the uh, of the enjoyment of it uh, and i think when people go to watch tribute shows um when they're as, as authentic and as close to the original as you can kind of get, uh, uh, you know, putting all the best effort to doing so and making it as so authentic, far as the people are concerned, you know, they're, they're back in 1986 at Wembley Stadium watching, and, and, and we've had so many lovely, lovely comments over the years, you know, people saying you brought, you know, I was at Live Aid in 85 and, I saw Queen at the Magic Tour in '86, and it brought all the memories flooding back. and And it's it, it truly is so rewarding. And people, um, they just truly appreciate it. And 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 you know, <laughs> I think to a certain degree, some people actually think you, you're the real person for 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 a few moments, you know. And they, and they <laughs> so it can get a bit crazy as well. <laughs> Do you know, it, it's a funny thing, though, isn't it, that music can do that because th there's nothing really apart from a song that can just transport you back to, you know, a better time. That may be through Rose Tinted yeah. Specs and that's fine, but there's certain songs I hear and I'm, I'm there and I'm 19 again. I, in my head, I'm still 19, but, you know, you are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It. Uh, Look, yeah. So what I want to do is show a little bit more of you on stage, you and the boys um, on stage. Um, so the Freddie and Queen experience once again. really see what you mean by the leg movements there do you know i can really see what you mean by his moves and the shuffling <laughs> we've got ian Beatty here ian yeah. Beatty is freddie with the queen experience let me just re uh relay the competition question once again you can win tickets tonight to see the queen experience show featuring ian on board the qe2 later in 20 uh 20 now just follow this facebook page to win uh and if you want to get couple of tickets all you have to do is comment in the feed that you're watching on who played freddie mercury in the film bohemian rhapsody is the question ian your show is big on the energy 
big on the moustache, big on the moves, big on the songs, but it's really all about the entertainment spectacle, isn't it? And that's what Queen were all yeah. about with Freddie. That's kind of the key. Absolutely, yeah. It's it, it, you know, it's so important. That's why the energy is very important. You know, as soon as we're within ten seconds of us coming to the stage, it's like, oh, okay, this is a party. This is gonna be. This is gonna be fun. And that's you know, that's always been the case um, with Queen as well. I think it, it was big. On, it was just. The, the, the power and the energy and the passion that came from the stage. I've, and, I, and I know I'm truly biased, but I've never seen um, a, a, a performer or a band that have that same energy. And I know I'm biased, but, I, I know, I, you know, in all my life of all the shows I've ever seen and, um, I've, you know, nobody replicates um, that power, that energy and that um, that fun more than Queen for me. Uh, it just, it, it truly is. Um, uh, they've got such an amazing catalogue of hits as well, you know, over many years. And there's so many hits, you know, that everybody loves. And even people, it, it, dare I say, if there's some people out there that are not necessarily Queen fans and they're just coming along to, um, because their wife are Queen fans or their husband's a Queen fan, by by the end of a sh of a show, because we just basically do just the hits, we don't get into the B side or get too self indulgent. Because we appreciate when we do our show that most of the people there, um, well, although there's a lot of hardcore Queen fans in there, that there may be, um, or, or they usually many that ne not necessarily are hardcore Queen fans. They only know what they hear on the radio and see on TV and and the songs they've heard over the years and. We kind of you, you have to play play to that. You kind of have to realize that you also. So we just and the thing is, we just we do like a two hour show, and there's so even there's even hits that we can't even fit in there because there's so many hits over those years, and they they was all great songwriters, all four of them. The, you know, um, John Deacon was a dark horse with, with some of the hits he he wrote. I mean, another one bites the dust was um, was a song that he written, and it's it still to the day. Um, mm. A fact was the highest selling unit song of all t of, of Queen's career. Um, I know everybody obviously thinks of Bohemian Rhapsody and stuff like that, but in terms of unit sales worldwide, another one, Bites of Dust, was the biggest hit. But um, a bit of trivia there. <laughs> but um, the, the, the point I'm making is that there's so many hits and there's so many genres as well. From like in that, the, that song was like a disco funk to doing the Brian May material that's more heavier rock stuff you know and then you got the, the, the some of the poppy stuff that, that that roger wrote and of course the marrying of all of that uh, with the classical rock and 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 everything in between with freddie's writing uh, it's it's impossible to go to a show and not know at least minimum half of all the songs if not you know um three quarters to you know um it's it's two thirds and and beyond uh, it, in most cases, they, they know every single song. You know, they know every single one of them. There's not, you know, it, it's hard not to know them because the, the songs are just so well, uh, just just so well known. You know, so it's, um, yeah, it's just an absolute pleasure to, to, to perform these songs. Because people just, you know, uh, there's certain songs in the show that they just love to sing and get involved with. Uh, there's obviously they've done a lot of um, uh, anthems of Queen, but. When you certain songs like Radio Gaga, you know, We Were Rocky, We Are the Champions, and, you know, uh, it, there's certain songs like that, that, it just demands the audience participation in, in, in you know, and, and they just can't, they, they just love it. They can't help but get involved with us. And <laughs> even if they don't want to, they want to see, um, you know, thousands of people singing it, they, they just can't help but get swept along with it. So it's, uh, yeah. The, the, do you know what the, the you hit on something a little bit earlier there there's a sense of kind of mischief about freddie mercury in his attitude he's always there's always a wry smile uh, there as well there, there yeah there's something of a sense of humor in queen that lots of bands maybe don't have Exactly. He's very, he was very, very cheeky. And that's one thing that I think, yeah, I mean, he's the only entertainer that I know that can insult his crowd, but then, and, 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 and yeah, give a little smile and a little wink. And, and they know it's, it's part of, it's part of his, part of the game. I mean, it's so like, I mean, 
speaking about the mannerisms earlier, you know, doing the struts and, and you know, really, you know, um, being over the top cocky and and it's all it's a, it's a character it's a character you know he he'll be the first to um you know he was the first to say it's not him off stage he's he's, he's quite a sh- he was a shy more reserved character and and and, and it, nothing like what he was on stage but on stage he was ju- you know it was just um it's so it was sort of rock god wasn't he but he was very yeah very cheeky um he, he would quite often just insult his crowd and say stuff but they uh, but they loved him for it because they knew it, it was all i don't think there's uh, I, I, again i'm biased but i don't think there's ever been an entertainer that that ever loves an audience more than freddie and gives so much of himself to an audience more than freddie and i think that's why they adored him i think that's why they adored him because he just absolutely just loved being there i think i do believe he was his happiest place when he's on that stage that was in his element that's you know he lived for that he was born for that and 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 i think we all know that there's not many of us get to do what we're born to do i suppose what's your what's your favorite song to sing because i'm thinking here trying to work out how hard it would be to sing the obvious thing to you know that comes up is bohemian rhapsody it must be it must be hard to do but what's your favorite song uh, that you get to do regularly Oh, it's. It, I get that. I get asked that question quite a lot, and it's. It it really is so mm-hmm. so hard to pick one song. It really is. Obviously, the the certain. I think the songs that you tend to uh, warm to uh, the most are uh, the likes of Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. You know, Radio Gaga, We Will Rock You, We Are the Champions. I think purely just because they're anthems, and the crowd gets so involved with those particular songs. And um, also, I want to break free as well. We'd love to have a bit of fun with that and, and, and bring the crowd in. And uh, uh, it, I could go through the whole the whole um, show and, and, and it'd be very, it's very difficult to pick one song that's because uh, they all just um, obviously um, had a different message and they were different eras. And some of the ballads are really beautiful as well. Um, I, I always have a, a bit of a sense. Uh, I always um, one of my favourites is actually One Vision, the, the opening song, because it just builds up, builds up, builds up, and then it's just that it's just that energy and that excitement about to start the show, you know, that buzz, and I, and I and I think that kind of um, yeah, again is is one of one of my favourites, just purely because of that. Really, is is that anticipation of getting on that stage, and you know, um, and yeah, but as you can see, it's impossible to pick one song. <laughs> It's it's really unfair question actually. I've just listened to you trying to answer that, and I thought I should have asked you to name your favourite child. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. It's impossible. <laughs> 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 okay, so there, there, there are loads of, obviously we have this back catalogue of songs, of huge stadium uh, favourites, but I know you've travelled a lot, you've played in lots of different places, um, to lots of different audiences, from big venues to smaller venues, special events and everything else, but what, if, if it's possible to answer this as well, what's the song that always really gets an audience? If you've got, a, you know, it's a tough night, it's a Tuesday night and, you know, people are not really, you know, in the mood maybe, what's the song that always gets them? Well, one of the songs that always gets them, and that's why we do it early on in the show, just to get them on board quick, is I Want to Break Free. Right. We kind of just like, right, come on, everybody, get involved here. You know, it's like, and and, and we, t- we tend to put that in earlier in the show just to get straight away, like, this is a party, you know. Um, it, and, and uh, yeah, that, that, and, and if, that, that works every time. <laughs> just people, <laughs> you know. Um, sometimes, sometimes we, 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 we um, we do other things with that. Uh, sometimes I'm not scared of doing the drag bit and <laughs> getting dressed up <laughs> on certain occasions. We sometimes do that if we really want to take it up a notch, uh, to which we have to implement into the show where, you know, um, doing. So if, if, there, if there's a, a Brian May solo coming up, then, then there is a chance that can happen, <laughs> that I'm getting backstage doing something. So, <laughs> so again, it, it, um, but, I think it's 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 near him. 
it, I won't say impossible, but it, it but it, it just doesn't happen. People tend to just, I think as soon, even the non-Queen fans, you know, as soon as they see that, that energy and that work rate and that 100%ness of the, of, of, and, and then they just, there's always different songs for different people, I suppose, but there's, but there's always a song in there that, that gets a reaction from, if even from the sternest non-Queen fan, they've got, you know, uh, people, as I said, they might have been dragged to the, to a sh- to the show um, by the partners, and go, I'm not even a Queen fan, but I absolutely loved it. Just absolutely loved it. It just felt like a, a real occasion, you know, the atmosphere. And um, and and we, we we just make the audience a part of the show. It's not us and them. They, they very quickly realise that they're part of the show. And, and, that, and I think that is very important because Queen, that's what Queen did more than any other artists and any other band for me. They, they, they just bring the audience into the show, made them a part of it. And, it, and it's just one... And again, it's just one big party, and you know, it's it's one big occasion, and, and I think that's absolutely um, such an important thing for 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 us as a Queen tribute. That's what we have to do as well. We have to bring the audience in, and um, and the and they come willingly <laughs> in most cases. <laughs> I, do you know what? That that's such a smart thing to do as well, because Queen of any band almost really made an effort to do that to make sure that their, their audience yeah. was there. I've got this kind of weird image yeah. of you in my head doing your your housework in your high heels uh, <laughs> for, for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure, but that, that's just private time, I suppose. Let me let me just show a little bit more of uh, you guys in action. Let's go to uh, a third video tonight, which I think gives a really good idea of just who you play to and how uh, that audience kind of interaction really works. <laughs> BT is Freddie Mercury. That's Ian and the uh, Queen experience appealing to. I was just watching in the crowd there. A guy with his daughter looked, I don't know, six, seven years old in the audience. Pretty much encompasses uh, what you guys do. In Dubai, very soon, Theatre by QE2, uh, going to be joining us here. Um, the final couple of questions, Ian. Um, it's been locked down yeah. across the world, of course. How's lockdown been for you? Oh, it's, it's, it's been very difficult, as it has been for us all, really. Um, uh, I've been kept busy with by my boys because they've been doing some homeschooling. Um, so it's Professor Ian now. <laughs> so we've um, um, <laughs> obviously do it, been doing a lot of um, <laughs> daily exercising, just going for walks. Um, I'm having to keep myself fit, uh, obviously for for when this is over to get straight back into work. Uh, so I, I have a, a bit of a, a, a forty minute workout every morning as well, first thing, 
you know, press ups and things like that. So that's that's very important to keep fit. And then I've gone about between a four and a six mile walk, as I say, with with my boys every day. Um, uh, my wife, fortunately, is still working, so we meet. Uh, we usually meet her at work and then walk walk back home. And um, yeah, it's just it. To be honest, it's it's it, on a positive side. It's been wonderful wonderful to spend such quality time with with my boys because i'm on the road so much um i don't always see them as much as i would like um and they've had me hold to themselves for the past 11 11 plus weeks just me uh seven days a week and 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 they've actually flourished and really enjoyed that i think it's something that um i think in the in the months and years to come we'll look back on as a as a very um uh, it, it was very uh, that was the rewarding bit that we got to spend so much time one over um, as I say so when I'm, I can be away for for days upon end you know sometimes five days in a week I can because I can be on the road and and stay in the hotels and sometimes you know and flying out to Switzerland and places like that so it, it's um, that that's the difficult part of the job being away from the family uh, that is the hardest part so um, I, I'm looking at it in a in a positive way i think hopefully it's a bit of a factory reset for us all maybe a little uh, um maybe change our thinking a little bit as well and in our um just remind us really that there's um there's a lot of things we take for granted and and i think this is also this has been a good reminder that you know just our basic freedoms and things freedoms and things like that and spending um we waste a lot of time don't we with technology on phones and stuff like that and and, and uh it, it it really gets it back down to basics i think you know uh, this you know it really has reminded us what's important i think and obviously good health and family and friends uh, are the most important things uh, sh- and should be to us all I mean, that, that's a really nice positive uh, attitude. It's a nice thing to hear. Um, I've got to say, uh, I guess you must be looking forward to coming to Dubai, playing the QE2. You've not been here before, have you? We haven't. No, we've not been to Dubai. I've been, we've been to Bahrain and Qatar. We had um, three three sellout shows in, in, in Qatar, um, I think, a couple of years ago when we was over there. Um We've done stuff in Europe and stuff like that, but yeah, it's first time going to Dubai, so we're really looking forward to it. We are. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I have a feeling it's going to be sold out shows here in Dubai as well. Ian Beatty is Freddie Mercury uh, with the Queen Experience. You know what? It's been really good to talk to you. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. There's just one more final chance to win tickets tonight to see the Queen Experience show on board the QE2 later in 2020. Comment in the feed you're watching. Here's the question. Who played Freddie Mercury in the film Bohemian Rhapsody? And we'll announce the winner and the answer at the top of tomorrow's show. Thank you for watching tonight. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place, with comedian and impressionist John Clegg, who has recently, you might know, uh, on Britain's Got Talent. Now, don't forget, we stream every night at 7.30 during the week with entertainers and comedians, care of Theatre by QE2 and Big Fish Comedy. To get news of our next shows, please like and follow the Facebook page you're watching. Of course, thank yous to Theatre by QE2, Book My Show, H2 Productions and Big Fish Comedy, and particularly Nigel. Thanks for pressing the buttons at the right time. That's it for tonight. Stay safe, wear your masks. Good night.